All right. My name is Patrick McCarty, and I am the library manager for the R.G. Bolden Annabelle Moore Library, which is one of the branches that make up or encompass the Jackson Hines Library System here in Jackson, Mississippi. And I am going to be presenting a very special uh, PowerPoint presentation about football, the history of football, both college and the NFL, the professional ranks. Uh, the title of my presentation, my PowerPoint, is Are You Ready for Some Football? And of course, it's presented by me, Patrick C. McCarty, the library manager for the R.G. Bolden Annabelle Moore Library. So here we go, without further ado. Okay, background. Uh, just a brief background of, uh, of the game. Um, in the United States, American football is referred to as football. Uh, the term football was officially established for the 18... 76 college football season when the sport first shifted from soccer style rules to rugby styles style rules although it could easily have been called rugby at this point harvard one of the pre uh, pre uh, primary proponents of the rugby styled compromised and did not request um american football evolved from the from the sports of rugby and soccer so that's its background that's where it came uh, came from and how it originated Okay, so moving forward, early beginnings. On November 6, 1869, Rutgers University squared off against Princeton University, which at the time was known as the College of New Jersey. Both institutions are located in the state of New Jersey, by the way, in a game that was played with a round ball and used a set of rules suggested by Rutgers captain William J. Leggett based on the Football Association's first set of rules. Rutgers won the game six to four. So that's the first game. That is the game that's credited as being the first football game ever played, first college football game ever played. Um, so moving on to Walter Camp, who was a true innovator and a, a great coach as well, and, and came up with a number of the uh, rules that we still uh, recognize in the sport today. Uh, Walter Camp is widely considered to be the most important figure in the development of American football. He played for the Yale football team and was a fixture at the uh, Massasoit House Conventions where rules were debated and changed. Camp's most famous change was the establishment of the line of scrimmage and the snap from center to quarterback. Camp also proposed that a team be required to advance the ball a minimum of five yards within three downs. Uh, Walter Camp was a very successful head coach. He would uh, later go on to coach both Yale University, his alma mater in New Haven, Connecticut, as well as Stanford University over in Palo Alto, California. Um, now, the rules committees and conference. Uh, I have this dated from 1894 to 1932. Beginnings of the Contemporary Southeastern Conference and Atlantic Coast Conference started in 1892. It was thought that the first forward pass in football occurred on October 26, 1895 in a game between the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia, and the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Uh, in 1905, 19 fatalities occurred in a college game, uh, resulting in the intervention by um, uh, President Frey, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, who reportedly threatened to shut the game down. On December 28, 1905, 62 schools met in New York City to discuss rule changes to make the game safer. As a resu result of this meeting, the Intercollegiate Athletic Association in the U.S., later the NCAA, was formed. Okay, the modernization of football. So we're going into the 1930s now. Of course, the 20s was a very you know, vibrant era for college football. Um, and the 20s, of course, saw the uh, early stages, I guess you can say, the development of professional football. And we'll go into that later in the PowerPoint here in the presentation. Um, the 20s gave us, you know, great, uh, you know, great Notre Dame teams coached by the legendary Newt Rockne. Uh, Red Grange was a college football star for the University of Illinois in the mid-1920s. And, um, you know, prior to uh, Notre Dame's ascendance, I guess you can say, as to the to the to the elite as 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 one of the elite uh, college football programs, college football was primarily dominated by. Uh, you had a number of Midwestern teams that were very 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 successful, very dominant. Uh, Fielding Yost at uh, Michigan certainly comes to mind. The great coach at uh, at the, the for the University of Michigan. 
Uh, but for the most part, it was uh, college football was primarily a sport that was dominated by uh, the Northeast, by uh, particularly Ivy League institutions such as Harvard and Yale. Um, Walter Camp is an example of this. Um, you had other great coaches as well during this period of time. As I mentioned, Newt Rockney at Notre Dame. You had uh, Pop Warner, who coached a number of, a number of institutions, including the University of Georgia and Temple University, and uh, and a few others as well. Uh, and then you, of course, you had Amos Alonzo Stagg, who was a longtime head coach for the University of Chicago, and later Pacific University. Um, but in the twenties, you saw really, you know, Notre Dame really became a powerhouse in college football and, um, and you started to see the South really come into its own as well with programs like Alabama and Georgia tech, uh, just to name a couple Vanderbilt had a very successful program back then. Um, but fast forwarding, uh, we're going to fast forward. We're going to jump to the 1930s. Now in the night, early 1930s, the game continued to grow particularly in the South, uh, bolstered by fierce rivalries. College football continued to grow beyond its regional affiliations in the 1930s. Along with the Rose Bowl, four new bowl games were created, the Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Sun Bowl, and Cotton Bowl. So you really started to see the expansion of the bowl system for college football. For a long time back then, you only had one bowl game, which was the Rose Bowl. Since then, you've had, you have, I think, up to 41 bowl games now in 2021. In the 1930s, you saw an additional uh, four bowl games added uh, to go along with the, uh, with the Rose Bowl. Uh, the 1930s also saw the growth of the passing game with such notables as Alabama's Don Hudson, very great, very good receiver, great receiver for the University of Alabama, later the Green Bay Packers, and TCU's Slingin Sammy Ball, who was a great quarterback uh in college for the uh for texas christian university and then later for the um the uh, washington football club um in uh, in washington dc the professional football team in washington okay now moving on to the 1940s 50s and 60s so we're kind of jumping around here a little bit of course you saw the war period world war ii in the early 1940s early to mid 1940s the war interrupted college football, but college football blossomed during the post-war period. Uh, and the, the 50s and 60s saw the rise of dynasties and power programs. Uh, Oklahoma's Bud Wilkinson, Alabama's Paul Bear Bryant, Texas's Daryl Royal, and USC's John McKay are all examples of dynasties and, uh, and also great coaches who coached these dynasties uh, during this period. Uh, passing numbers dropped while the running game was more commonplace and became more prevalent. And there's a picture of the legendary Paul Bear Bryant, one of the greatest uh, college football coaches of all time for uh, not just the, at the University of Alabama. Of course, that's where most people know him for, or, you know, he's most uh, recognizable for his tenure at Alabama and what he accomplished. But before that, at Texas A&M University and uh, the University of Kentucky as well. Uh, modern college football. Now we're kind of jumping around. Um, we're kind of entering the modern uh, period uh, for college football. Uh, at the birth of cable television and cable sports networks like ESPN, there were 15 bowl games in 1980. With more national venues and increased available revenue, the bowls saw explosive growth during the 1980s and 90s. With the growth of bowl games, it became difficult to determine a national championship in a fair and equitable manner. So you're really starting to see the expansion, the growth of college football into what it is today, the modern game uh, with, um, you know, the, the, what we uh, most closely associated with uh, in terms of, uh, you know, it's close affiliation with ESPN, of course, college game day, the, uh, the amount of bowl games that are played now. And it's really become a big business uh, college football has. And it kind of all started, there was always money involved, of course, but it really started with the national exposure that the game received uh, started to receive in the um, in the seventies and into the eighties and nineties. Okay, now we 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 jump ahead and you know to the BCS era, which occurred from nineteen ninety eight to two thousand and thirteen. In nineteen ninety eight, a new system was put into place. The uh, bowl championship series for the first time and included all major conferences and all four major bowl games. 
meant to say place and not placed. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving right along, the champions of these six conferences, along with two at-large selections, were invited to play uh, in the four bowl games. Uh, the, the major four bowl games, of course, are the uh, Rose Bowl, uh, Sugar Bowl, Orange Bowl, and Fiesta Bowl. The Rose Bowl is in Pasadena, California. The Sugar Bowl is in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Orange Bowl is in Miami, Florida. And the um, Fiesta Bowl is in Tempe, Tempe, Arizona. Okay, and so oh, going back to the BCS, I want to mention this. Uh, the BCS, really, the BCS era was it was very controversial because you saw a lot of a, a few instances in which you had teams that were, you had dis, uh, disputed national champions. Um uh, 2003 comes to mind with LSU and USC, 2004 with Auburn and USC. So there were a few times when you had disputed champions during the BCS era. And so there was a great demand for a playoff system to be uh, in place and implemented. And so that's what we've seen since 2014. We've seen the college football playoff era. Uh, due to the uh, in, in, intensif intensification of the college football playoff debate and disputable, disputable results of the BCS, conference commissioners and Notre Dame's president voted to implement a plus one system, which was to be called the college football playoff. The CFP system is centered on six major bowl games played on or near New Year's Day, often called uh, the New Year's Six. This created the Power Five and Group of Five conferences as well. So you have the big, big conferences, the Power Five, which are, you know, the uh, it's starting to get, we're starting to see kind of a, a change in that because of what has happened recently with Oklahoma and Texas defecting to the Southeastern Conference and what's going to come of the uh, Big 12. But what you've seen with the, with the Power Conferences, with the uh, Power Five is, you know, you, you, uh, you have, you know, ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Southeastern Conference, um, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, uh, and also the uh, Pac-12. So those are the big, uh, the Power Five conferences, and then you have the Group of Five conferences, which consist of the MAC, Sun Belt, Conference USA, the AAC or American Athletic Conference, uh, and the uh, Mountain West Conference. Okay, so now we're going to discuss professional football. So we talked about the college game, and there's much to be a lot. There's a, a lot more that can be said and discussed about uh, college football, as far as the players and, and legendary coaches and moments and everything are concerned. Uh, but we're going to jump ahead to professional football. Uh, in 1920, the American Professional Football Association was founded. Two years later, in 1922, the APFA was renamed the National Football League, or NFL. By the mid-1930s, the NFL consisted of 25 teams. By the 1930s, the league, league continued to expand. By 1934, however, all the small town teams, with the exception of the Green Bay Packers, still around to this very day, had moved to or been replaced by teams in big cities. All righty, so jumping uh, ahead and by the way, in the 20s and 30s, you really started, you saw the, the dominance of, uh, you know, Green Bay had some very good teams. The, uh, the Detroit Lions had some very good teams. Uh, Chicago Bears were really the dominant team during that period of time. Um, you know, Red Grange, the great Illinois running back who I mentioned, um, played for Chicago back then. And they had a lot of other great players as well. So the 1940s and 50s. In 1941, the corporate headquarters moved from Columbus, Ohio to Chicago, Illinois. An annual draft of college players was first held in 1936, all the way back in 1936. That's interesting. Uh, the first televised NFL game was on uh, October 22nd of 1939. College football was the biggest attraction, but by the end of World War II, pro football began to rival the college game. Excuse me. Uh, in 1950, the NFL accepted three teams or admitted three teams into its league, Cleveland Browns, the San Francisco 49ers, and the Baltimore Colts from the, from the uh, defunct All-America Football Conference, expanding to 13 clubs. And then this is a notable uh, game that was played in 1958. The Baltimore Colts and the New York Giants played the greatest game ever played for the championship that year. And that was the uh, Giants were uh, had a quarterback, from the uh, from Ole Miss by the name of Charlie Connerly, and of course the Baltimore uh, Baltimore Colts 
they were quarterbacked by the legendary Johnny Unitas. And there's a picture of uh, Paul Brown, who was the great Cleveland Browns head coach. Uh, the Browns had some very good teams uh, in the 1950s, some very excellent teams, in fact. All right, now in the 1960s, you saw the two rival leagues. Uh, you saw the or the NFL, which was the established league, National Football League. And then you saw its rival, the American Football League, which was established in 1960. And for, for a few years, it was considered inferior to the NFL, but that but, 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 but would soon be formidable competition. By the middle of the 60s, competition for players, including separate college drafts, was driving up player salaries. In 1965, famed Alabama quarterback Joe Namath signed with the AFL's New York Jets over the NFL's St. Louis Cardinals. That was a big, uh, a big coup, if you will, for the Jets to land Namath. And he would go on, of course, to win a Super Bowl for the New York Jets a few years later. Uh, the Super Bowl was established in 1966, pitting the winner of the, of the NFL championship against the winner of the AFL championship. Uh, the New York Jets upset the Baltimore Colts. Uh, this was a few years later in the 68-69 season. I uh, believe it was 68-69. That's right. Upset the Baltimore Colts, thus giving the AFL credibility and leading to the eventual merger of the leagues. Okay. So now the modern era of the NFL. Now we get into the 70s and 80s in that time period. And even later uh, into the 90s and in, in, in the, in the contemporary era, uh, in the 70s and 80s, the NFL solidified its dominance as America's top spectator sport with the emergence of Monday Night Football, which was a huge, huge deal for uh, ABC um, with uh, Howard Cosell, the legendary broadcaster Howard Cosell and uh, Don Meredith and a lot of and, uh, Frank Gifford. Um, and what would develop from that, uh, it's still, you know, 50 years later, it's still an American institution. Monday Night Football is. Uh, rule changes in the late 1970s ensured a fast-paced game with much passing to attract the casual fan. Uh, that sort of coincided with the rise of, you know, the 49ers as a dynasty in the 1980s and into the 1990s and more of a pass-happy uh, style of football, which is pervasive to this day. Uh, other leagues attempted to compete with the NFL but failed, most notably the World Football League, United States Football League, Extreme Football League. Uh, by the way, the XFL has since been brought back. Um, and then the game has grown and attracted an international following. So uh, football is still has continued to grow and become really a vibrant um, and impactful American football the game, not just the United States, but um, uh, elsewhere as well. Uh, elsewhere, you know, outside of the uh, country as well. Uh, NFL legacy and popularity. The NFL has the highest per game attendance of any domestic professional sports league in the world. Uh, the NFL generates a lot of revenue through merchandise, such as video games and apparel, uh, clothing, and so forth. The brand continues to expand and blossom while remaining a cultural tra attraction and phenomenon. And I have a picture here of some Madden, Madden 2011 games. Madden is a very popular video game series. Uh, people obviously still play it to this very day. Um, so that's just an example of the NFL's uh, legacy, cultural legacy, and financial as well with the um, with merchandising. Okay, and so I have a couple of sources here as well that I wanted that I included, and the end. So I hope you enjoyed this PowerPoint presentation. Um, you know, the NFL, uh, pro football, college football, I mean, it's, 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 that, it's that time of the year now. It's football season. A lot of people are excited about the game. Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it, the impact that it's had on uh, American culture is, is broad and it's so pronounced. And continue, it's a sport that continues to grow and really become, I think, something that's really significant in our, in our society. Uh, it's gone through its ups, ups and downs, of course. And, um, you know, the state of Mississippi has produced many great football players. Um, Jerry Rice being one, Brett Favre, uh, Archie Manning, Walter Payton, of course. Uh, so just here, right here in the, in the Magnolia State, we've produced 
great, excellent, superb talent, both on both the college collegiate collegiate ranks and as well as on professional football too. So uh, we have a lot to be proud of, and it's football is 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 has become as as American as apple pie and baseball, you know, and people tune in and watch. So that being said, I thank you for watching this, uh, this uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, for more information about programs that the Jackson Hines library system has to offer, uh, you know, feel free to visit our website, www.jhlibrary.org. You can check out our various social media accounts, uh, including uh, YouTube. You can go on YouTube and you can check out our uh, channel to watch videos like this. And, um, you know, we strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, we have a lot of just fascinating and interesting programs in the past and a lot of good stuff that we're planning in the future. So I think there's a little bit of, a little bit of something for everyone. So with that being said, thank you so much for your participation, for your attendance and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.